Well, we have a lot to cover here in chapter three, so let's just get straight into uh, the decisions that we have to make before we can even install SQL Server 2012. Okay, so we have to decide things like the hardware, uh, the addition, which we've somewhat covered both of those a little bit here. But there are going to be lots of decisions that we have to make that are throughout the setup process of SQL Server. There are going to be decisions that we have to make regarding upgrading SQL Server 2012 as well. So let's kind of get into that. And let me just tell you, this is going to be a long process. What I like to do I like to spend a whole lot of time up front talking about it and discussing it, and then we'll quickly be able to go through the setup. And you'll, as soon as you see the screens, you'll say, oh, okay, now I understand what this option means and why I would make this particular choice. So we have an hour, an hour and a half or so about decisions we have to make. Now, that's not going to be all in this video. We'll spread it out over several videos so you can kind of um, come back and find the specific videos that you want to talk about. Okay. So this chapter is about installing and upgrading to SQL 2012. So we're going to talk about installing the database engine for the first time on a new server. And we're also talk about upgrading from SQL Server 2008 or R2 to SQL Server 2012. Okay, we'll do that kind of at the end of this chapter. And then we'll also finish up by applying service packs, uh, cumulative updates, hot fixes, what's the difference, how do I know my version numbers, do I need an update, etc. That sort of thing. We'll talk about patching. Okay. Now, there are some related topics that are covered later in this chapter, okay? We're not, or later in the course, rather. We are not going to talk about upgrading one database to SQL Server 2012 until a later chapter. See, that's going to be in Chapter 14. What we're talking about here in Chapter 3 is upgrading an entire installation of SQL 2008 or R2 to SQL Server 2012, Okay. So if you're just interested in moving one database, we will get there. It's just going to be chapter 14 when we talk about how to do that. And that's going to be super simple. I mean, really, that's, there's not a whole lot to that. Now, there are related topics that we don't cover in this course. We don't cover installing analysis services, reporting services, or integration services. We covered that in course 170 at a uh, somewhat of a high flyer level, and we will cover those in the individual detail courses, uh, 173 about SSIS, 174 about SSRS, and 175 about analysis services. Okay? So let's start here. Let's do a first time installation of SQL Server 2012 on a new server, okay? Server that's never had SQL Server 2012, okay? And we'll talk about upgrading here in a minute. Now for this first time installation, we have a lot of decisions. Now I have identified nine key decisions and that's what we're going to spend the next 45 minutes to an hour talking about. However, there may be many more, okay? And we'll, uh, we'll see those and we'll talk about those when we get into the setup. So we're going to talk about here over the next probably six to eight videos, what a workload profile means, what, how that matters, uh, how to actually evaluate the workload profile. So we'll talk a little bit more about hardware benchmarking and we'll take a look at some of the tools that we can use uh, for hardware benchmarking. Uh, we'll talk about the prerequisites, the software and hardware requirements. We have to decide our architecture. Are we 32-bit or 64-bit? We'll talk about where you need to install SQL Server. Do you only need to install it on the server, or do you also need to go to somebody's workstation and install some of the components? We will talk about the SQL Server security model. We will talk about where to put the database files, the tempdb files, and all those fun things. We have to talk about service accounts. There's uh, a lot new and different uh, in, say, 2013 than there was in 2003 with respect to how service accounts are handled at the operating system level um, as well as the SQL Server level. And we'll finally talk about instances and kind of how that all plays into it here. Okay? So we'll, let's start in this video with the workload profile. Okay, We'll come back in uh, the next video and we'll do hardware benchmarking tools. <laughs> Now, chapter two, we talked about choosing your hardware 
we talked about choosing your edition, right? And in particular, we talked about sizing up new hardware and choosing your SQL Server edition in video number seven of chapter two. I would strongly suggest if you have not watched that video yet, that you go back and watch that video, at least that video, if not all of chapter two, right? because that is required knowledge for this particular, uh, for the whole chapter, really. Now, when we do talk about the workload profiles of our servers, okay, sometimes we have to get down and work with individual databases. Sometimes we have a server that has just one database that we really care about on it, and that's the one that drives the workload profile. Other times we have a server that has multiple databases, each with a different workload profile, and that kind of muddies things up just a little bit, right? So if we have an OLTP server with one 500 gig database, okay, that may require a different type of hardware, a different setup than an OLTP server that has 50 10 gigabyte databases. Okay? We might have a different setup than an OLTP server with three 100 gig databases and six 50 gig databases, okay? or an OLTP server with one 500 gig database. In other words, these two are the same, however, their workload profiles may be, even though they're both OLTP, they may be very different. One of the, uh, the top, we'll just pick the top one up here. So the top OLTP, this may have you know, 4,000 concurrent connections. The bottom one may have only 100 current connections, um, but the bottom one may be doing much larger queries. Uh, there may be lob transactions uh, that are chewing up a lot of disk space and chewing up a lot of um, the, uh, the hardware here. Uh, so you kind of have to get in here and do some of your benchmarking, which we'll talk about a little bit more in that second video. Okay? So it's not as simple as saying OLTP this, OLAP that. Okay, when it comes to uh, understanding your different workloads. Okay. Now, we talk about future-proofing uh, an installation. Okay. So what you have to do is we have to talk about this concept of consolidation. Okay. So consolidation here is when I have, say, three SQL servers in my enterprise today, and we are paying heavy licensing costs for those three servers, and I look around and I say, gosh, you know, those servers, we could really bring those databases into one big server and save a ton on licensing and on management costs, right? So we often will consolidate multiple SQL Server 2008 servers into a single SQL Server 2012 server, right? So you have to actually consider the workload of all of the servers that you will be consolidating. Right? Then you also have to calculate your growth rates, right? So we... When we start talking about calculating growth rates, we can use history, and we'll talk a little bit more about how to do this later on in the course, but we can use the backup history of the database to say, hey, what was the size of the database one year ago? What is it growing year to year? And then we can make projections based on growth rates, and that gives us an idea of how much hard drive space we would need, uh, how does that change our workload, uh, does that mean we need to have more memory, let's go ahead and buy that now, if memory is cheap, or let's go ahead and buy memory that we can add into rather than have to completely replace all of the memory. Okay. So I think that most of the time the mantra is buy the most you can afford, buy the fastest CPUs that you can with the most cores. Okay. Of course, licensing in SQL Server 2012, you do have to license per core, so make sure you pay attention to that. Buy the most memory that you can afford, but again, don't don't go buy 128 gigs of RAM if your server will support more, and then you have to replace all that 120 gig of RAM to then come up with 256 gigs of RAM in two years' time, okay? So if you're going to, maybe that's a harder number. So let's say that your motherboard uh, supports 128 gigs of RAM, and your workload profile says we will be able to use all of that 128 gigs of RAM within two years. However, memory is too expensive right now, so we can we should go ahead and only buy 64 gigs of RAM, wait for the price to come down, and we'll add 64 gigs later. That's what you want to be able to do. You want to add 64 gigs later. You don't want to have to throw away the 64 gig you have right now to replace it with 128 gig. So if possible, that's what we look to do.
fastest discs that you can afford that also have the various profiles that you want to uh, have. We'll talk about RAID levels here in a little bit, and uh, we'll talk about SSDs versus uh, SANS and uh, other strategies. Now, don't forget, we're just talking about the database engine here. If your server is going to also be a reporting server or also do analysis services, you are going to have to make sure that you have the hardware to support it. So you're going to have to go through workload profiles for those as well and make sure that your hardware can support it. So let's get into benchmarking next.